Hello everyone, and welcome back to Anyone Can Learn to Code. In the last episode, we learned how to create methods for your own custom classes. In this episode, we'll have a very fundamental discussion as to how methods work. In the past, we've basically defined methods as the things that objects do. If, for example, we had an object called baby, you might expect to have methods like cry, eat, and sleep. And while this may be true, we'd still be missing a crucial aspect of how methods work. And that is, besides all the stuff they do, at the end of the day, a method always ends by giving you something in return for calling it. And this is called what the method returns, or its return value. That is, when you call a method, it always returns some object to you when it's finished running. This object can be a string, a number, or any other object for that matter. Let's see this in action. Now let's stick with our baby example for now and create a baby class. So we've got our baby class here. And let's start with a peaceful method, the sleep method. So we've got an empty sleep method here, and let's fill it in with a return value. And to return something, you type in the word return, followed by the thing, the object that you're returning. So we're going to return a string. Baby is sleeping. Now you may be wondering that in the previous episode, we created methods and never used the return keyword, and we'll get to that. But this method is the typical method whose entire goal is just to return a simple string. Let's run this in IRB. So I've saved this file as baby.rb. So let's load up IRB, load the file in here, and now we can create a variable called baby, which will contain a new baby object. And now if we call baby.sleep, we see that we get in return the simple string, baby is sleeping. Now let's have this method do a bit more and make some sleeping noises to better simulate a baby sleeping. Well, it won't actually be noises, but we'll just print a string to the terminal. That will be a bunch of Zs. Let's see what happens when we call the sleep method now. Let's reload baby.rb and baby.sleep. So we see now that this method both does something and then returns something. The thing that it does at first is print a bunch of Zs to the terminal, and then the method ends by returning the string baby is sleeping. Now note that the thing that the method returns always comes after this arrow. Things that it does before may not have the arrow, but the actual return value, meaning the object that the method returns at the end of the day in IRB will always be indicated by this arrow. So first, the method did stuff, in this case made a bunch of Zs, and then returned something. So we have the arrow followed by the return value, in this case the string, baby is sleeping. Now let's return to the principle that a method always returns something. Is that really true? What would happen if we remove this line, the line that returns something, and only have the method do something, namely print a bunch of Zs to the terminal? Let's run this version of the file and find out. So we're going to reload baby.rb because we modified the file. And then we're going to call the baby.sleep. Aha. So we see that, again, we first print a bunch of Zs to the terminal. And then we return something. But in this case, the thing that we're returning is nil. Now, nil deserves an episode of its own. But the basics are that nil is a special object in Ruby that represents the concept of nothing. It's not really nothing, however. It is a bona fide Ruby object. In fact, it has its own class. So we can check what the class of nil is by doing nil.class, and we see that we get back nil class. So nil is a real object that has its own class. So our sleep method did return something. It returns a nil object. So a method will always return something. And you may not specify what it should return. And in many cases, it will end up returning a nil object. But a method will always return something because that is what methods do. Now we've just discovered that you may not always care about what a method returns. For example, the way we have the sleep method now, the primary reason for calling the method may be more for the stuff that it does rather than the stuff that it returns. So here, for example, all we care about is that the sleep method prints a bunch of Zs to the screen. We don't care what it returns. We don't care whether it returns nil or the number three. None of that really matters to us. And that's okay. 
but it's always a good idea to be cognizant of what a method is returning, even if you're not going to make use of it. Now, many methods are all about the object they return. Most of the methods we've seen for built-in Ruby objects are like that. For example, we've seen the methods first and last on an array. So for example, if we have, we'll set an array variable to be an array containing the numbers one through six. If we do array.first, we get the first item in the array. And if we do array.last, we get the final item in the array. And here we can see that these methods aren't simply printing something to the screen, but they are returning these values because we see we have this arrow, which means this is pointing to the return value of the method. So array.first returns the number one, and array.last returns the number six. So for methods like these, the return value is the thing we care about. If these methods also happen to print friendly messages before giving us the return value, that would be warm and fuzzy and all that, but it's the return values that we really want to obtain from these methods. Now a very common scenario is that a method will run a bunch of code and do stuff, and then return a value based on all the stuff it just did. For example, we may write a method that takes a bad movie cliche, modify it to some extent, and then return the result. So let's create a class called cliche. We'll save this file as cliche.rb. And this is a class that will deal with cliches. We'll create a method called make bad movie cliche better. And we'll start by having a cliche variable that will be a string containing a bad movie cliche. And the rest of the method will proceed to make this cliche even better. So the first thing it's going to do is going to put the letters of that cliche in all caps, which we achieve by using the upcase exclamation mark method. Now the next thing the method will do will be to tack on some additional exclamation marks to the end of the string. And then finally, after we've processed this cliche, we are going to return the new version of the cliche. And all we have to do for that is now return the cliche variable. So here we started with a base cliche string, capitalized everything, added some exclamation marks for emphasis, and then returned the result as the method's return value. And we can see this in action. And now we have a bad movie cliche made much better. Now here's another important concept. Returning a value is always the last thing that a method does. So what would happen if we moved this return cliche line earlier in the method? Let's say we put it right after here, after we defined the base cliche, but before we actually made it better. Let's see what would happen. Let's reload the cliche.rb file. and again call the make bad movie cliche better. So we see that all we get as the return value is the original cliche. And that's because these two lines of code that follow the line of return cliche never even get processed. Ruby never even sees these lines of code because as soon as the method returns a return value, the method is over. And that's simply the way Ruby works. A method always ends with its return value, so if you happen to return that value earlier on in the method, the method stops running at that point. Now it's also important to emphasize what the implications of receiving a return value from a method are. And that is, that you can take that value and do other things with it. We can demo this by splitting up our cliché methods as follows. Let's start with a simple cliché method, which will return this string. So we'll return that string, and we'll get rid of this line over here. Then we can create another method called capitalize cliche, which will return cliche.upcase. And now we can remove that line. And now for our make bad movie cliche better method, we can get rid of this and simply return the capitalized cliche plus some additional exclamation marks at the end. 
And now if we go back to IRB, reload the file, and run cliche.makebadmoviecliche better, we see that we get our super duper cliche. So the way this works is that the cliche method simply returns this string that says you haven't seen the last of me. Then the capitalized cliche method, which calls the cliche method, which receives in return as its return value the string you haven't seen the last of me, and then proceeds to capitalize it. So at the end of the day, the capitalized cliche method returns as its return value the capitalized version of the cliche. And then finally, in the make bad movie cliche better method, we start by calling the capitalized cliche, which gets the capitalized version of that string, attaches some exclamation marks to the end, and returns the result. We'll end with one final fact, and that is that if you don't use the return keyword in your method, your method will end up returning the very last object that your method ever referred to. So in this example, we can actually remove all mention of the word return, and the code would end up doing the exact same thing. It's as if you put the word return in front of each of these lines. Because in the case of each of these methods, the last thing referred to by the method is what gets returned whether you use the return keyword or not. So starting with this cliche method, since the last object referred to in the method is the string, that's what gets returned. And likewise for the other two methods. And you may ask that with the baby class, we saw that it returned nil, and you might wonder why that's the case. Isn't this string the last object that the method referred to? And that's a great question, but the answer is, is that the last thing in this method is not the actual string of z's. The last thing in this method is the fact that we called a puts method on a string of z's. And the puts method itself actually returns nil, because puts methods in general always return nil, no matter what they're printing to the terminal. I know I just threw a lot at you, but this material is super fundamental and will become second nature quickly with practice. Thanks for watching. Anyone can learn to code.